I hope you guys can hear me through the mask because I'm in the airport currently in Romania and I obviously can't take this off because COVID. Uh, but if you guys haven't guessed already by the title of this video, I'm headed to Cairo, Egypt. I'm super excited. I'm also super excited to just like start traveling because I've been in Spain for like a month and a week and I was really getting ready to like start traveling. The only thing though is that I already told you guys like my style of traveling is like slow, right? And that's what I'm going to do. So originally this trip was also supposed to be slow. Like I was supposed to stay in Egypt for a month and then there's another country which I'm still planning to go to which I, I was going to be in for a month and then after that I was going to continue traveling for some more months until the end of the year so I was planning to just like travel till the end of the year but when I arrived in Spain only a week and a half later my mom had to head back to the US where I had just come from because of a medical family emergency and so obviously that meant I didn't get to spend a lot of time with her and I really wanted to spend time and so I decided to make this trip shorter so I'm going to Egypt for a week I'm going to the next country for two weeks and then after that I will be returning to Spain for a couple weeks and then after that I will be heading off somewhere new for the rest of the year. So that hopefully will go as planned. But yeah, and actually I feel a lot better about this plan because I was getting really stressed out about the fact that it's summer and I don't think it's a good idea to go to Egypt in summer. So yeah, other than that, I'm stuck here, like I said, in the airport. I'm just probably gonna study Chinese or read something and I will be headed to Cairo around midnight and I land around two in the morning. But yeah, it's okay because I have a hotel room. Breakfast was included in my hotel room price, so I took advantage and ate as much as I could before heading out into Cairo and then I somehow found my way to the hostel by bus and then metro. So I made it to my hotel, well my hostel. You guys can see I have marks here and here from carrying the backpack for so long. But I'm finally here and I'm going to just rest for a while. This is the room that they gave me for tonight. Um, apparently tomorrow night there's another room that is available at the same price that comes with a shower as part of it. And he said that I can take it if I want. So I will probably, although that one doesn't have a balcony and this one does, but still nice to have my own shower and yeah. I'm just gonna rest for a bit before heading out because that was a long trip here. That very evening, I decided to take advantage of time and went to see the Nile River for the first time. On my way there, I had a couple of incidents with guys being nice to me and showing me the way only to take me to their shop like this one here, but I finally managed to get away from them and made it to the river. My first dinner in Cairo was the most authentic Egyptian food I could find. Obviously, I'm kidding, but I was honestly way too tired to try anything new. And so I went for the first place that I recognized and that was Pizza Hut. The next morning, I was up bright and early because I had booked a guided tour to the pyramids through my hostel. I was really happy with the tour and the guide, however, it did cost me a lot more than I had planned for, but of course, that is kind of expected in such a big tourist spot. The first stop was at the Pyramid of Djoser or the Step Pyramid, and according to the guide, in the times of King Djoser, tombs were just rectangular figures built on top of the burial chambers. However, Djoser wanted something grander, so his architect continued adding smaller rectangles one above the other until forming this pyramid-like shape. So you cannot realize that there is an entrance here. 
next stop was at the pyramids of Dahasur. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And that is plural because there are two of them. The first one turned out wrong because his architect tried speeding up the construction process by changing the angle of the pyramid midway, creating a weird shaped pyramid. And then the second pyramid was made correctly and that is the one that I entered. For this pyramid, I'm going to go in by myself. He's done a good job of introducing me to this place on our way here, so I pretty much know what it is that I'm seeing. I believe that this is his tomb. Everything is gone, not because they were taken to any museum, but because they were stolen, including the mummy, which apparently because of the fact that there were people who hated him, they destroyed the mummy in order to take revenge on him so that he couldn't go to the afterlife. My legs are shaking because I'm not used to going up and down that type of step. Next, the guy took me to a papyrus museum run by the government, which was free and included free tea and also an explanation on how papyrus is created. And then, of course, it is also a huge gift shop. So this we call it papyrus plant. It grew here in the river line. We cut the stem into the size we need. Then we remove the green part. We cut it into strips like these keeping them in the water for seven days. Then between two pieces of carpets, we put our stuff in two layers, horizontally and vertically. Then we cover all, putting them under a press for one more week, another week here. But this machine here is modern machine. In ancient times, instead of that, they use big rocks. So after two weeks in totally, we have a paper like this. This is the first kind of paper in the human history ever. Finally, it was time to see the most famous site in Egypt, the Pyramids of Giza, I'm sure you all know. For this, my guide took me to book a camel ride, optional of course. trip was nice and the guide was very helpful in taking photos and videos of me. They have a whole set of cheesy poses that they make you do, which is actually super funny to me because it's not my style at all. And here is me touching the pyramid for the very first time. got back from a long day of seeing pyramids and they switched my room for me so now I have two beds instead of three which I'm not complaining about and I've got the shower cabin here and then I don't have a balcony but I have a window that is facing the same direction now I'm going to go get food and rest I'm probably just gonna take it easy for the rest of the day Next day, I decided to go to the famous and ancient bazaar of Cairo, which is called Khan El Khalili, something like that. The pronunciation is obviously different to what I'm used to. I walked through the chaotic, more local side of the market before arriving to the calmer, more touristy side. 
For lunch, I went to this place in the middle of the bazaar and the food was so delicious. However, the waiter, while he was super nice to the point where I agreed to exchange phone numbers in case I needed help, but that evening I discovered by message that he actually wanted a relationship with me. And this was the third time that kindness from men in the city revealed other less good intentions and that was very disappointing to me. Still, before I made that discovery, the waiter did recommend me going to this area after lunch and it was totally worth it. It was actually the most beautiful area that I had seen in Cairo. It was super clean, super authentic Egyptian, exactly what I had pictured before coming to Cairo. So I'm one and a half weeks into my Jordan trip and I'm editing the Egypt video but I feel like the last part of the video I have to explain to you guys. Basically a lot of things happened at the end of the trip the last three or four days and it was just really a lot of bad luck on top of what you guys already know that after a couple interactions with local people I just felt like I couldn't trust anybody but don't worry that changed. Some people changed that first impression. But yeah, basically the last few days I had a lot of bad luck. First of all, I got food poisoning for the first time ever traveling. The day after I went to the bazaar, I don't know where I got the food poisoning. All I know is that all my muscles were aching, kind of like when I get sick with flus. And then I felt like throwing up all night. I, I basically didn't sleep that night. So that was one. And then the other big thing that happened was that that same day I went to get my COVID test because in order to travel to Jordan, you need a COVID test. And so I went to the Children's Cancer Hospital, which according to the internet and according to my hostel was the cheapest place to get it. So that's cool. I was very happy I found that. And I went there, got the COVID test. And the next day I went back. When I went back, I actually met someone, an Egyptian guy who was incredibly nice. And he actually asked me what my experience had been like in Egypt. And I told him the truth and he felt super bad and was super apologetic, which obviously is not his fault, so he didn't have to, but I was super grateful as well. And also he gave me a list of places that he thought were safer for women or where I'd be more respected and I'll list them here so you can see them for yourself. And my last day in Egypt, I went to visit one of these places and he offered to drop me off there. And then when we got to the area, he drove me around showing me all the best places to eat the best places to have ice cream, coffee, and I told him I don't drink coffee. Um, and then he finally dropped me off at an Egyptian restaurant because I told him I really wanted to try Egyptian food, which I did. So yeah, he was incredibly kind, but that's not what happened. Well, the, the problem was after that, the next day I woke up at 2 a.m. and I was at the airport like 2.33 because my flight was at 5.55 in the morning. And I get there and they tell me that my COVID test is not valid. Super bad news, but my PCR test is not from an approved lab for Jordan. And so I have to rebook my flight and redo my COVID test, which is all gonna cost me about three, four hundred dollars. First time I'm gonna miss a flight in my life. Jordan only accepts COVID tests from certain places in Egypt, which I understand, I guess there are a lot of issues probably with fake COVID tests. I don't know. Um, so I ended up missing my flight for the first time. So there goes food poisoning for the first time, missing my flight for the first time. It's a really overwhelming trip to the point where when I missed my flight, I actually seriously considered just buying myself a ticket home back to Spain. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm so tired. There's just too many obstacles. But eventually I decided to give it one last shot. I went to one of the locations that had the COVID test that was approved by Jordan. I went there at eight in the morning when they opened and I told them my situation. And these are people number two that proved to me that it's not Egyptians, it's just the area, the type of people. And, you know, in every country there are good and bad people um, and you just have to be careful. And if you know locals, it's also easier to find the safer areas or the, the places where as a woman you'll be treated with more respect. But anyways, the COVID test office was incredibly kind. Um, the guy there, he told me I could stay there. I asked him if I could stay like all day. And he said, I could stay there. He ended up giving me Wi-Fi. He uh, bought snacks and water for me. And he spent all day keeping track of my COVID test, trying to get it to me before 6 p.m. And I was super lucky. I actually bought a flexible ticket for that same day. It was the next flight to Jordan. 
and thanks to these people i made it like i got my test results at like six or something and i went straight to the airport because i chose the place that was closest to the airport from like the list of approved covid test places i got on my flight i just couldn't believe it and then i arrived here in jordan so it was a lot it was a definitely an adventure i went through a lot of ups and downs and a lot more downs than ups but that happens it was unfortunate that that was on my very first trip <laughs> but it happens and yeah, it's just part of the travel. And obviously I lost a lot of money with that PCR test issue, but it is what it is. Anyway, that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed because other than that, I really enjoyed my trip. It was super exciting to see some of these super famous places for the first time and yeah. Okay, so I will see you guys next week. Hope you guys are excited because my next video is the one to the Jordan Desert, which was a super cool experience. And yeah, see you guys.